Welcome into We Are SC. Welcome into Five Things. This is Eric McKinney, joined by Greg Katz and Mark Hulkin. Guys, we're talking USC's 42-28 win against Louisville in the Direct TV eggnog holiday bowl i think <laughs> we're, we're calling that from now on uh I, I mean let's let's get into this one and, and as always with five things we're going to start with our player of the game uh we'll go with with greg on this i i think we're going to hear a chorus we're, are we're you, picking the same are guy you here serious? i mean honestly it was spectacular and i'm talking about miller moss i mean if you watch it on tv i know that you know, Mark and I were just like, man, this is unbelievable watching it unfold. Even when he threw the pick on the goal line, okay, he bounced back from it. And by the way, on that pick on the goal line, the team never gave up. They didn't sit there. I mean, they chased that guy all the way downfield so he didn't get a touchdown, which I said, these guys are into it. You know, sometimes they just go, okay, it's over, you know, whatever. No, Miller Moss, to me, I mean, I, I'll i talk about this at the huddle on Tuesday, but the reality is, there, Lincoln Riley is going to have to do a lot to convince me that this isn't the starting quarterback for USC in 2024. It would be, I don't want to say inhumane or ridiculous, but it's a no brainer. The guy should be the starting quarterback. You want to bring in Will Howard? I don't think Will Howard's going to come now. Why would he come when he's going to go against that competition? Who, who do you want to get upset more? Will Howard when he doesn't play or, or uh, you know, Miller Moss? who just said, I can't do any more than I've just done. And I think for the, and Mark brings up a good point, for the attitude of the team and the euphoria they're feeling and the love that they have for Miller Moss, it would be a death spiral to, to overlook him this time. But I tell you, one hidden thing to me is, I guess we kind of understand, especially at, in hindsight, why uh, Malachi Nelson might have been inclined to say, you know what, may, this would be Malachi's worst nightmare if he hadn't said he was going to transfer. So going forward, I will just say this. Miller Moss, two plays come to my mind. And Mark and I were talking about this after the game. He threw away two balls, you know, ditched them. And that was like, this guy's really thinking. I mean, one of them was just when he dropped back to pass and he, he I think the play was blown up. He could see it immediately. He didn't, he lived to, to throw another down. And when you combine intelligence like that with obviously the gifts that he has, could it be could there be more pressure on a player to prove himself in a bowl game? I know it was the Holiday Bowl, it wasn't the Rose Bowl, but the pressure on him to 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 even do what he just did to eliminate a lot of question marks about him, it was unreal. I'm done. Mark. Anything to add for for your player of the game? Yeah, you know, it was a toss-up between Miller Moss and uh, Miller Moss. <laughs> <laughs> the dude was amazing tonight. This was his first start as a USC Trojan playing quarterback. And what did he do? I mean, let, let's pull up these stats real quick. 23 for 33, 372 yards, six touchdowns. That He completed 70% of his passes. And he will also let you know he threw an interception. And one of the first things I did during the game was like, Eric, bad throw or bad route? Because, you know, when I was watching, it's like, you know what? Did Millie make a mistake? Did, did Tyron just not cut that route sharp enough and round it off? Doesn't matter. What I watched Miller Moss do tonight um, was, and Greg talked about it, he made Lincoln Riley's job really, really difficult in 2024. Uh, he is your starting quarterback. You know, unless, unless there's another Caleb Williams that's knocking on the door tomorrow, you don't you don't replace that. Uh, Greg, you said it. You know, he played. Not only did he, he he looked outstanding, but he played composed. He didn't take a sack. And remember, Louisville had you know uh, the last thing was Gillette. He, he led the ACC. He was a second team All American. Miller's like, oh, you're not getting stats on me. He would ditch it at the closest receiver's feet just to keep the offense going, not to put them behind the sticks. And when you hear the players talk about him after the game, I mean, Kyron Hudson was asked the question, is he your starting quarterback? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> it, it, that's the type of leadership players just naturally gravitate towards. And to see the, the 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 visceral joy 
in Miller's face after the game with his helmet still on on the field, he was crying. But it it was it was just like you know what, I did it, and those were tears of joy, and, and to 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 be able to watch a young man go through high school, and to finally get his chance at USC, it, it's hard to separate fan from journalist. Tonight I was just a Miller Moss fan, and he made everybody else a Miller Moss fan. It was it was just a sight to behold. I mean, six touchdown passes. On the season, Louisville gave up 16. Louisville had the, what, the best red zone defense in the country, or one of the top. USC carved it up like it was just a hot knife going through butter. And it was it was because of the way Miller Moss ran that offense. Amazing game. Amazing. Eric, what are you going to add to this? Yeah, I want to see what well, he's I'll, to this. <laughs> so, So I'm going to go away from... Miller, just a bit, just just so we can talk about a couple other guys. Taj Washington absolutely oh, deserves absolutely. to be in the conversation here. Maybe not for player of the game, but a guy who was outstanding. He kind of got USC going a little bit. If he doesn't make that cut on that third down play and USC has to settle for a field goal early, maybe this thing looks a little bit different. He finishes with 99 yards and, and gets his thousand yard season. He came in needing 37 and, and blew past that. Uh, Pretty quickly, all four of the true freshman wide receivers, Deuce Robinson is going to think about that drop, but that touchdown at the end was huge. Jacoby Lane, we've been kind of buzzing about him for a little bit throughout uh, all this bull prep, and he shows that he's probably going to be that guy. Um, So those guys offensively, and then defensively, the, the secondary for having a lot of guys out. I mean, without Kalen Bullock, Christian Roland Wallace and Damani Jackson, three starters pretty much all year to get Delta hand where you don't have those guys for Jalen Smith to play the way that he did in that game, profit Brown to play the way that he did Anthony Beavers with, with a big fumble for a forced fumble at the end there, you had guys kind of stepping up all over, but it was all sort of orbiting the Miller Moss show. And, and that's what I think you saw from him, the players, the players love him. Caleb Williams loves him. Caleb, anytime Caleb Williams got to talk about Miller Moss, he raved about him. Miller Moss has that kind of persona, and the guys know that he's earned it, that he's earned everything that he's gotten. They root for him. They play, they played hard for him in this one. And this was not a game, I think, coming in that we expected. At USC, oh yeah, they're absolutely going to have their A game after the season they had and, and everything that's gone on with guys leaving and all of that. Uh, for for them to play that way for him and for Miller to play that way was just just outstanding to see that from him. And Greg mentioned something that stood out to me: the pressure that he was under. Miller Moss talked all bull prep. It's not pressure. It's another game. It's another game. The, this was not another game for Miller Moss. He had never done this before. He had, he had never been the starting quarterback at USC. That is not another game. And yeah. for him to show up and play that way with they – don't, they don't take into account what we talk about and what fans are thinking of, but this was absolutely a game that was going to determine all the offseason conversation about does USC have the answer with Miller Moss or do they not – And for him to come out and answer the bell that way uh, was just just outstanding for him. I don't think you can heap enough praise on what he did under those circumstances with, again, who was sitting out a pretty good Louisville defense. I mean, this was not going out and carving up Nevada or some of these, you know, (laughs) these uh, teams that, that SEC teams play kind of late in the season. This this was a statement game for Miller Moss, and he absolutely rose to the occasion and surpassed that. To your point, Eric, one of the Louisville defensive players in the post-game press conference said, you know, what was USC doing different than, you know, what you guys saw earlier in the season from everybody else? He says, nothing. They were just beating us one-on-one. So USC's got the players. That's a point I think we can get into (laughs) later. Absolutely. So, So let's go from player of the game to play of the game. Greg, back to you. What what was kind of your play that stood out in this one? 
Well, if I leave out the performance of Miller Moss, you know, everything he was throwing was a play of the game in a lot of ways. But I think that, that to me, it was the plays of the game by one person that stood out so big to me that it was like NFL big. Uh, Taj Washington was really good. Uh, I mean, I even hate to say that, you know, he wasn't the play of the game with a lot of things he did, but Jacoby Lane was unreal. Those two touchdown passing, when we're just talking about play as a game, not, you know, catch and run and go downfield. But some of those play, those receptions were like, we're talking about NFL all over him. You know, he, if he even can see the ball, he's catching it. And I think some of them were stunning. Uh, I mean, obviously, Miller Moss got the ball in his vicinity, but to convert those plays and not drop them, because we saw, we saw Louisville have plays where the guys dropped them. And, I mean, we're talking about a true freshman here who we remember how tough the recruiting battle was at the end. So when people say to you, well, maybe, you know, we don't, recruiting's a little bit overrated. This guy ain't overrated, let me tell you. And those who know about him, they would say, yeah, well, what took you so long to figure that out, buddy? Done. Mark, your play, your play of the game in this one. Real quick thing with Jacoby Lane, because he, he made sure everybody heard it, who was within earshot after the game. Uh, he also finished the semester with a 3.2 GPA. He was very proud of that. So props to him. Congratulations, Kobe. You know, we're talking about the offense. I, I think we need to start give, tipping our hat a little bit to special teams and defense. Uh, Tyron Hudson's block punt, pretty big play of the game. At a really important time when it, it kind of felt like, you know what, US, this could go a different way if USC doesn't change the momentum. And then sometimes it's kind of, it's, it's, what, what's the saying? It's, it's better to be lucky than good sometimes. That fourth down stop that they got when the Louisville player, the wide receiver slipped, fell down on that fourth down conversion. It just seemed like it was USC's night. Um, again, you got a big special teams play. You almost Zachariah Branch almost bust a punt return for a touchdown. The six weeks off, this team they kind of grew. You saw what happened with Miller Moss leading the team in offense. You, you kind of got a sense that all right, you know what? Maybe they got rid of whatever was going on. It was a slow process, but the defense came to play. They made they didn't play great. But they made plays when they had to. Not every time, but they made just enough plays. So again, I, I want to. I guess my play of the game because there was just so many to choose from. Because it happened on special teams, I'm going with Kyron Hudson's block punt, and he turned around and got a touchdown on the ensuing um, offensive series. So yeah. So the one that stands out to me again, if we're if we're just picking one play, there was a third and three. 12 minutes left in the game about, and USC's up, up seven, 35, 28. And you're, you're kind of in that mode at that point where what we'd seen all season, right? If the offense blanks, things might not end up going really well, even after all the stats and points and everything they'd put up to that point. Uh, again, third and three, USC hasn't run the ball well all game. And Miller Moss just pipes a strike into Kyron Hudson on a slant who catches it in traffic. And it's one of those plays where you just, you have to have it. You have to be able to do that in a game. You have to put the ball there. You have to trust your receiver to catch it. And then it was, as a receiver, you have to make that play. And there were a lot of times this year where USC just didn't have that. They, did, they, they couldn't go to that. They couldn't get that done. Uh, for them to be able to do that, here I, I think was huge for that and it keeps keeps that drive going and USC is able to to pump that up to 14 points uh in terms of the lead and and kind of hold on to it the one sneaky one I'm gonna go when Miller Moss was not on the field that fourth and one from Jake Jensen with kind of a power <laughs> run you're in that same situation where USC's up seven and if that doesn't work and you go the other way, maybe it's a different game. So they're, they're able to capitalize on that. The Jacoby Lane touchdown comes right after that play. Again, USC is able to push it to 14 and kind of stay comfortable. But that, that was a fun one to see for, for him to come in and, and get that done on a tough run. You needed two yards. You got two yards and six inches. 
It, it was right there. Absolutely. Well, uh, <laughs> let's go to, to our third thing here. The expectation met for you, Greg, we'll start with you coming into this game expectation you had that, that you saw play out in this one. Well, I'm happy to say this. I didn't know what the end of what the score was going to be because there were so many intangibles. Who's going to be on the roster? Who's playing? Who isn't playing? I think, J, uh, you know, uh, Wolf got dressed tight end, okay, Jude Wolf. And I went, wait a minute, I, I didn't know he was playing, right? But the expectation I said in the huddle was, I have no idea if they're really going to win. My heart says yes. My head says not so fast, my friend. Uh, but I was, I said that I thought they'd play really hard. I said, they're going to play hard because there's so many young players and they get their opportunity. Ones we've already mentioned, uh, even, uh, Elijah page started a tackle, right? So R Riley's credibility was good there. He got in there, you know, Monheim was actually a guard, which was like, well, he's finally where be he's playing where we thought he should play. But the expectation to me in, in the bottom line was they came to play and the young players were motivated and that, and some of the seniors, like maybe uh Dietrich and some of them really realized this is my last game. And they seemed to combine to it and they played hard. Even if they had lost, I would have said, yeah, but they came to play unlike UCLA. That's true. Mark, your expectation in this one, that, yeah, that was not, bad. Yeah, there's not really a lot I can add to that because I, I don't think anybody anticipated USC playing as well as they did tonight, considering all the limitations with players available, um, injuries, et, et cetera. So just to, to, to know that this team had that pride to come out and show what they're all about. And, and they did that. It was the young players showing out and saying, hey, look, I got some talent. I'll be ready for you next year. And yeah, I'm just going to stop there. That, that to Just to have them play as well as they did, knowing that, you know what? You lose this, you've lost four games in a row, six out of seven. And you're going <laughs> to... There's going to be a lot of shade over the program for, for the next couple of months, especially heading into spring camp. So expectation met the young guns. They had the hunger that they, they had the drive and they, they perform. I've got to go for some real specifics here, because honestly, my expectation was that USC wasn't going to be able to get up enough for for a Louisville team that, again, was pretty good. I do think we take from this that the Pac-12 was as good as we thought it was. And some of these other conferences were not as, <laughs> as good as, as people were talking about. So, but my expectation, again, in terms of singular performances, the, there was too much buzz from players about Jacoby Lane to think that he was not going to do something in this one. Miller Moss kind of talked about him and was like, I don't want to give too much away, but I, I think he's ready to do something here. So they clearly had kind of that combination going and, and Miller had a lot of faith in him and, and proved it by giving him a couple jump balls uh, against coverage for touchdowns there. So his performance there, and I think all the true freshman wide receivers get lumped in there. That group is phenomenal. Makai Lemon clearly had that bounce after flipping over and playing defense for this, for the second half of the season. He, mentally you have to be in one spot or the other. It's so tough to do both things or to flip if you want to be on one side. And, and Lincoln Riley was very clear when he started playing corner. Makai Lemon's a, a wide receiver at USC going forward. And so for him to kind of provide that spark, I, th I think Makai Lemon's a guy who could probably play four or five positions at, at USC, but he's got that, he's got that extra something at wide receiver and those four freshmen are, I mean, for, for Zachariah Branch to be kind of the, the quietest on offense in a game, it tells you some some other guys did some things. Um, so I think that's it. I think the expectation for that group and now going forward, certainly in, in every game uh, to be outstanding is going to be there for them. Let's go to our fourth thing. The flip side of that, Greg, your biggest surprise in this one, something that jumped out to you. Well, 
I don't know if it's a, a, a big shocker, but I thought they tackled much better than they've had in the past. And I judge that for me when I start looking at teams on defense. They weren't going tackling high. They were tackling uh, around the, the thigh, knee, and ankles. And the ones that did get blown were always the ones they tried to wrap a guy from the waist up. And that's how they lost. But there was a much more fundamentally sound tackling. You know, what I think uh, Urban Meyer said it on some pregame show. You know, if you stop the, their legs, they're, they're not going anywhere. And it seemed like there was a concerted effort to do that. And I don't know if it was if it's the coaching that's doing it or the players figured it out. But to me, that was a real surprise. And also, I, I want to just say that, look, um, Jack Plummer had really reamed SC uh, when he was quarterbacking at Cal, right? Even in a losing effort. I mean, he had, what, 400 yards or something of that nature. And he only had 90 yards. But as important is, he got sacked three times. Miller Moss didn't get sacked at all. So my surprise was sacks and tackling, uh, which to me was like, good job. Mark, your surprise. Uh, well, it's kind of piggybacking off what Greg was talking about. How well the secondary played, considering their numbers. I mean, they were on the field a lot. And this was their best game of the season by far, especially if you're just looking at, at, at statistically, I mean, to, to hold the, look, I, I understand that um, Louisville was missing their top wide receiver and their, and their top running back, but whatever USC was doing out there defensively, whether it was them causing the confusion or Louisville being confused on their own part, Louisville had to waste timeouts because they weren't able to, to whether it line up right or, do whatever they need to do to scheme and credit USC's defense. And I talked about it a little bit a few minutes ago. You know, they weren't able to stop the run, but they haven't done that all year. They stopped the pass. So they were 50% better tonight than they had been all season. And imagine that. Imagine this defense showing up throughout the regular season. Maybe we're not having a conversation right now. Maybe we're having a conversation on New Year's Day. Just saying. You, you have to wonder, Mark, I think you make a good point. Was the players that left, okay, who said they're going to the NFL or what have you, for, portal, whether for this team it was addition by subtraction and guys got their opportunity? I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't think we'll ever know the, the answer to that question. But just to be able to see, you know, Prophet Brown and Jacoby Covington, they, they had their moments where they struggled, but – they played a really solid game. Jalen Smith, he's been much maligned. We know it's not he's not Chris Arledge's favorite player. He won the defense. Oh, what Chris thinks. He'll get his shot in the huddle. Sorry, Chris, didn't mean upset. But, but, but Jalen Smith, he was the, the defensive MVP of the game. He led the team with 12 tackles, all solo, by the way. And then again, amazing. Yeah. And then Max Williams to go out with a, you know, to get a strip sack going in there. That's pretty nice. Like just a just to see the player step up, and especially the ones who had struggled, and it, it seemed like the secondary was always getting their butts kicked this past season. So to see everyone out there make a play, everybody in that secondary who played made a play, and it was great. So I'm going to combine, I think, both the years, the tackling and the secondary. Louisville had three plays that went 20 or more yards against USC this is a this is a USC team that gave up 68 20 yard plays coming into to this game if you look at three a game over 13 games and you're at around 39 of those that's top 15 in the country UCLA has given up 37 uh at this point so that's the difference in what they did in this game compared to what they have done all season in just letting teams absolutely pile up explosive plays and just run points on the board. That was the surprise to me that they were able to be so consistent in not allowing one. And then one of the, the only 20 yard pass play was that kind of misdirection where the running back leaks out uh, up the backfield and gets open there. So 
the yards after catch was absolutely limited. It seemed like they brought down everybody as soon as they caught the ball. And that is not something I thought we'd be sitting here saying about a USC secondary playing without three starters and, and needing to rely on it, guys. And the one thing that I do kind of like about that, it makes us, I think all of us, I'm going to speak for all of us here, certainly for me, feel a little bit more sane when we would talk after this or after games about like, these guys are, they're good, right? Like we, we know these players can play and can make plays. We've seen them, you know, in practices going back years, we've seen them in high school. We've seen them do this. Like they're capable of doing this. And so it, it made me feel a little bit better seeing these guys again, rise to the challenge and the occasion and, and just play what stands out to me. And, and it's not a surprise because I think it was more of an expectation going back a few weeks when they made the the well a few weeks months now but when they made the defensive coordinator change the confidence that it seemed like these guys played with and again with this i know lincoln riley said after the game we had to make kind of a, a flip in what we wanted to do defensively late but the again the sense of confidence that the defensive guys seemed to play with with the new staff and kind of how they all mesh together that seemed to show up and that that's for me that's one of the first things with tackling it's do you know you're going to make this tackle when you go hit this guy and it felt like it felt more like that was evident in this game than than in past games so i think the big one here again it's it's our last one our last five things for 2023 so the big one is now our fifth thing, Greg, your biggest takeaway from this one, and obviously we're going to spin this looking months, maybe a year ahead into 2024. Again, if if that's what this comes down to, what what's your biggest takeaway from this one? Well, there's a couple. Um, it revolves around Lincoln Riley. Who is Lincoln Riley? Is he an accomplished coach? We, we were led perception-wise when he came from Oklahoma. Is he a coach in training or is he simply a fraud? And I think a lot of that is like, we're going to find out. It's going to begin with what he does with, with Miller Moss. Is he going to make a mistake like he did with Grinch and keep him, you know, a year too much and should have got rid of him after the first year? Is he going to take Miller Moss and say, this is a no-brainer decision. This kid's got to start. I'll figure out who's going to back him up, Jake Jensen or what have you. But there's a lot of questions. You know, Mark, I think, mentioned kind of the this shady end of it coming uh, after this season. We're all on a bit of an upper tonight, no question about that. But where does the program go from here? The, the schedule next year is absolutely brutal. Make your own cliche, murderer's row. Uh, I mean, it's ridiculous. But I feel a little bit better because I know that if Miller Moss, at least what we saw tonight, okay, I don't expect him to look like, you know, you know, John Elway every every time he comes out, so to speak. But, you know, he's somebody you can say, we can compete against these teams. He can make us compete. Now, whether Lick Riley wants to really have a running game and really call running plays and not have what, I mean, let's face it, how many yards did they have rushing uh it was ridiculous, really, in some ways. At seven, well, they, they finished with seventy-one, but half of them came on one one run right at the exactly, end. Exactly, exactly. So he's got to make some decisions. It look at it all gets back to him, and to his credit, he did something about the defense. We'll see what he's going to do with his offense. Okay, uh, they still need to get big bodies. I think they need to get bigger bodies, even on what they recruited, uh, and also on the offensive line. But I took solace that Monheim, who I think will come back, and I mean, I hope he does, and gets to play the position he's cut out for a guard. Elijah Page, you know, we didn't get to see some of the ones that I thought we would see, the freshmen. But I'll take uh, I'll take it on his word that a lot of them are, you know, ready to go. They just didn't get in this game. But I feel a lot better in a lot of ways after this game. I think for Lincoln Riley, the pressure on him is enormous right now. And he needed this game probably more than Miller Moss, maybe in some ways, but now what's he going to do with it? Now that it's in his lap, what decisions does he make? That's how I see coming on. Mark, your biggest takeaway. 
that I, I don't think things are as dire as everybody was making it out to be going into next season. This this team has a chance to be okay next year. Uh, I get, for me, it was just being on the field those last five minutes of the game and being able to really look into those players' eyes and 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 feel the emotion that was that was vibing off of them. I mean that that, that defensive play they made at the end of the game where they all ran into the end zone and were posing and and mugging it up. They haven't been able to do that all year. And to, you, if you were cl- again, I don't know what you see on that on TV, but that type of camaraderie locker room culture that's what they talk about and that's what you build off of and this again remember this team was coming off of three straight losses and the their last one was against their crosstown rival where they they didn't even look like they showed up to play the game so for me to see them re- to rebound or respond from that this way that's how you build build momentum and i feel a lot better going into spring camp next year coming off of a win where you know everybody was saying hey you know you don't get anything out of this game um i think we yes. got a lot out of this game yes they got a lot out of this game we got a little bit to a lot out of this game that's my takeaway i'm i'm with you i'm su- maybe, maybe this goes back to my surprise i'm surprised how significant this feels in terms of what the off-season discourse is going to be especially to hold i mean hold them to 28 usc hasn't held a team to less than 30 points since arizona state i mean <laughs> you're going you're going it feels like years ago where you have to go back and, and look at that this was a, a usc team averaging 42 points against them over the last i think eight games of the season and so that was going to be the talk. If Louisville ends up winning this 43-42 or, or whatever, it, it was going to be a long. hugely long off season. And so for it to end like this with some positivity, I think is is really big. The, the Miller Moss, the quarterback thing, obviously becomes huge. Now, Miller Moss, the, this game, you look at the stats and it's unbelievable. He, he wasn't perfect. There were some missed throws, right? He had Zachariah Branch, I think, twice for touchdowns, where if you lay it out there a little bit more. But you're nitpicking so much there. You have to go back to, I think, Mark hit on it pretty well, the vibe he gives the team. And, and if he, I think, doesn't end up being the starter, you take away so much momentum that this game kind of gives you into the offseason and what the team can rally around. I think that's what this game really did for me, at least, is that it sets sets Miller Moss up for the team to rally around him the entire offseason. And it feels like they want to play for him. And that becomes so much of I think what's missing in, in college football. When we talk about this a lot, guys kind of coming in for one year, two year, but from different backgrounds, all of that. Miller Moss knows what it means to play against UCLA. Miller Moss knows what it means to play in South Bend or take on Notre Dame. And you want that. And it is, it's not a its not a direct comparison of Miller Moss to Caleb Williams. USC needed Caleb Williams when he came in and played the way that he did. Going forward now, it feels like Miller Moss really kind of took ownership of the team. And I think when you spin that forward and you talk about recruiting the quarterback position in the transfer portal, which again is going to be a huge topic of discussion, Miller Moss maybe is not an A plus quarterback when you look at the entire quarterback landscape next year. But when you're a great program, when you're looking at the, the college football playoff teams year after year, even Florida State this year, they could withstand, I mean, the, the committee didn't think so, but they could withstand that injury and still play because their defensive line was great, because they had so many guys around that position. And that's what it feels like for me when there's so much focus Who's the quarterback? Who's the quarterback? Who's the quarterback? You've got a pretty good one. And if Miller Moss is a B plus, and I'm not saying he's a B plus, but if he gives you a, a B or a B plus and you're an A or an A plus, 
everywhere around him. And we're talking specifically offensive line, defensive line. If that's where you can put all of your emphasis and build, that feels like a better way forward for the program than let's just toss everything at, at this port, portal quarterback. And I, I don't think it's the wrong way to go either way. And clearly you need numbers at quarterback, but again, I'm, I'm surprised at what a statement this game felt like for Miller Moss to pass because this is just a bowl game and it's not a big time bowl game. And these lower tier bowl games mean less and less and less. But you know that Miller Moss played this game like it was a national championship game for him. And he put that much into it. And I think that means something and, and should mean something going forward here. So that that's kind of my takeaway is you've got a long way to go before you have to take that opening snap against LSU. There's a ton that could happen. But – I don't. I don't know how you sit there and say Miller Moss didn't get it done. Off. Lincoln Riley gets ridden out of town on a rail. He will not. It won't happen. You can't do it. It's. It, it would be a tough spot. But again, you have to bring in the numbers, right? And so, how you balance that? How you add to this room without disrupting whatever you may have built over these last six weeks? That that to me is going to be pretty fascinating. But we'll see. This is kind of uh, first minutes of the 2023 into 2024 offseason. Still a ton of kind of roster building and shaping and into the transfer portal, out of the transfer portal, how this team kind of goes. But for one night, for the first time in a long time, good, good to be a USC fan and, and covering this team and seeing those guys out there in, in a 42-28 win. Again, against the number 16 Louisville team that was a seven-point favorite coming in, and USC really showed up and, and got it done. So, again, congratulations to Miller Moss setting USC and Holiday Bowl records uh, in, in his first start for the Trojans and a solid defensive performance. So, for Mark Hulk and for Greg Katz, this is Eric McKinney, and this is signing off for five things for the 2023 season. Thank you for watching five things. Thanks for tuning in to We Are SC.